I think the best way to understand particle equilibrium is through an example. So, here I have a force of 300 pounds that is pulling on the system at C. We have a cable at C that is pinned to the wall, and we also have a rod from A to C, also pinned to the wall. We can see that the cable is pulling on point C because of the 300 pound load, and that the rod is, in a sense, pushing on point C since, since, it, since it is trying to make sure the applied force does not move point C downward. The angle that the force makes with the vertical is 20 degrees, and the angles at points A and B are 30 degrees and 55 degrees, respectively. Our mission is to determine what the force in cable BC is and what the force in rod AC is. So, how do we do this? Well, we've been studying vectors and forces and a bit of trigonometry, so let's start out by examining our point of interest, point C. We want to know what is going on at this point. The first thing we know is that there is a force of 300 pounds being applied to this point. The angle that the 300 pound force makes with the vertical is 20 degrees. Next, we know that the cable is pulling on point C, so we can draw a force vector, which I will call FBC, that represents the tension force along line BC. We know the angle that this makes with the vertical is 55 degrees. Finally, we have the rod AC, which is sort of pushing the point C. So, I will draw a force vector called FAC that is directed along line AC. We know the angle of this force vector from the first diagram to be 30 degrees. Point C, as we know, is in equilibrium, which means that the forces acting on particle C produce no resultant force that causes the particle to move in any direction. We know that the resultant force of this system must be equal to zero for particle C to be in equilibrium. Well, in order for this to happen, the vectors that we have drawn should be applied in a tail-to-tip fashion, and the last vector added should end up back at particle C. In other words, the vectors we have in our system need to close back at point C. At this point, I'm going to introduce you to the force triangle approach for solving particle equilibrium problems that have three vector forces. We can create our triangle by adding these three vectors in a tail-to-tip fashion and then solving our problem using trigonometry. First, I'll redraw the 300 pound force. Then, I will add vector AC to the tip of the 300 pound force. Finally, I'll add the FBC force vector to the tip of FAC. Notice that when I added the last vector, the triangle was completed when FBC trailed back to point C. At this point, you can probably see what the force triangle approach is and where the trigonometry will come to aid us. But before I move on any further, I want to calculate the interior angles of this triangle. Let's start with this angle here. I'm going to draw this really big so we can clearly see what is going on. If we know that this angle here is 55 degrees from our original diagram, and that this angle here is 20 degrees, we can conclude that this angle here is 55 degrees minus 20 degrees, which is 35 degrees. Now, let's move on to this angle here. Well, this is an easy one. It's 20 degrees plus 30 degrees, which is 50 degrees. Finally, this last angle should not be too much of a problem. Since we know that the interior angles of a triangle all need to add up to 180 degrees, this angle here is simply 180 degrees minus 35 degrees minus 50 degrees, which is 95 degrees. If you're having trouble visualizing or determining the angles that govern this triangle's geometric properties, then I highly suggest you draw out the force vectors yourself on a piece of paper and try calculating the angles carefully, and I promise it'll click when you attempt it on your own. Now that we know the angles of this force triangle, we can simply 
calculate the magnitudes of FAC and FBC using the law of sines. We see that the sine of 35 degrees divided by 300 pounds is equal to the sine of 95 degrees divided by the magnitude of FAC is equal to the sine of 50 degrees divided by the magnitude of FBC. Calculating this, we determine that the force in rod AC is 172.7 pounds and the force in the cable BC is 230.7 pounds.